What's going on, y'all? So listen. What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode of Raising Canaan. Well, Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, Season 2, Episode 6. Um, it's business, man. Let me just say this. Like, it just feels like this season is just really going by real kind of fast. I mean, we already on episode six. I did like three reviews up in this apartment already. So, it's just like, we got four more episodes left. Mm. How y'all feel like the season is going so far? So far... I don't even feel like I'm gonna be honest. It's 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 not bad. It's not bad. It's just that it doesn't really feel like much has really happened. If you get what I'm saying, it just doesn't feel like much has really happened. I mean, stuff happened, but not so much. But anyway, let's just get up into the episode. We got um Rock getting all her lieutenants and everything together to get them this big ass speech about the fact that listen, we ain't finna back down to the Italians or whatever. You know, we still taking over New York. We taking over New York. We taking over New Jersey. We doing a damn thing. You know what I'm saying? And um the whole time that she's giving this little speech or whatever, you know. <laughs> Maybe it's it's just my body that's like really betraying me because on the one hand I'd be like, listen, um, Raquel, you just doing too damn much. But at the same time, this like black woman being up in power and shit, it's like really a turn on. But at the same time, somebody told me, of course, y'all had to tell me and burst my bubble and tell me that you know, mama is married and she married to a white man and they got kids. I don't care. I don't care. You know, you shouldn't have told me that her husband was white because now I really don't care. No shade. No shade. I'll break that family up, okay? You put me on the side. I'll be quiet. Give me the NDA to sign, all right? It is what it is. I go do what I got to do, you know? <laughs> I'll be a home wrecker for the time. But anyway, you know, listen, I'm just saying my truth. I'm just saying my truth. Somebody was like, oh, girl, yeah, y'all should know by now. I'll break some homes for real. And talk shit about other people that do it too. Girl, I'm, I'm just that type of person. But at the same time, you know, as she's giving this little speech or whatever, we see Roel and he's looking a little shifty, okay? And um, <coughs> <coughs> we see that, excuse me, I'm sorry. We see that Marvin, you know, he feels some type of way. Lou speaking up to um, um, Rock and saying, I don't think this the move. This New Jersey shit is not really the move. And Marvin is agreeing with him. But, of course, you know, Rock is going to do what she want to do. She put Kanan back up in the game. She was like, at least we got some man up in here that's going to actually be down with the plan or whatever. And I'm just like, this is your 14, 15, 16-year-old son. Like, come on, ma'am. You're just, uh, it's just ridiculous. And honestly, we can blame both Kanan and Raquel for what's going on with Kanan. Raquel brought her son up into this life, meaning that she was already in this life being with the father of her child, uh, the play father of her child, um, Tech Nine, right? Or Death Note, whatever the hell his name was, you know? And um, having a baby by somebody like that that's out in the street. So instantly, he's going to be born into this lifestyle. But you don't have to actively participate or have him participate in it. But see, at one point, what we have to remember is when season one came on, Raquel was not trying to have him a part of this lifestyle. He inserted himself in it, trying to do shit on his own. So therefore, it kind of forced Raquel's hands since, you know, you didn't already got a body. You up here doing this. So therefore, bitch, you about to be in on it. But at the same time, she still could have covered up the shit that he did and said, no, you're going to fucking school and put her goddamn foot down on that. Like everybody keep on saying in the comments. When they going to school? Have they been going to school? Because, baby, we ain't seen nobody step into a classroom yet. And they wearing coats out here. Christmas break and um Thanksgiving break and New Year's break ain't that long. Okay? Ain't that long. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, what's going on? But anyway, they got that going on. Um, Roel pulled Mar uh, uh, poor Rock to the side trying to talk to him, um, trying to talk to Raquel about, uh, uh, what's his name, Unique. And I'm just sitting here like, see, I told y'all. It ain't, he is not to be trusted. Now, I brought this up last time when 
Broel was supposed to have that bus, that little school bus full of drugs, and then all of a sudden, the Italians pulled him over in the way that he looked after they did that. Some people were saying they don't think that that was a setup with Unique or whatever. It just happened. As we see in this episode, well, I'm literally just at the beginning, it definitely was a setup. Because all of a sudden, Roel is telling Rock at this particular moment, now that they got this issue with the Italians, you want to tell them, tell Raquel that, oh, Unique can fix this situation because he already got a um, little relationship or whatever with the Baselli's and everything. And, you know, he owe you a favor and all this stuff. And I'm loyal to you. And as soon as somebody, I was with Raquel, as soon as you start off talking about some, I'm loyal, baby, I don't trust you. Okay, Roel, how loyal can you be to somebody when you was just kicking it with the last person a couple of months ago? No, we know you're not loyal, okay? And so, you know, he was like, we can hook that up or whatever and see what's good. Okay, cool, fine. They going to do that. And like uh, uh, Marvin and then was like, you don't trust this nigga. She said, hell no. I don't trust him and I don't trust Roel. But we going to go over there and see what's going on. And eventually they do. They go over there to talk to him and all that stuff. And, you know, um, he going to make it happen. But Raquel is like, no, you're not going to meet me there. We're going there to fuck together. And you saw the way that he smiled as she was walking out, you know. And I'm just like, huh. He got a plan up his sleeve this whole time. He trying to get back either in the game or he trying to get revenge on Raquel. Because, you know, it was Raquel and him that set him up and got his empire taken down understandable it's the street life it's the game you know and you gotta i just can't be in the game like that it is too stressful bitch i would rather work a fucking nine to five my whole life than to do some illegal shit like this because baby i ain't got time to be looking over my shoulder every goddamn day okay that is more stressful than the goddamn stock market all right i just i just don't understand how niggas do it but anyway you got detective howard sitting at the diner and he waiting on somebody to show up I'm going to assume that he probably waiting on Kanan to show up so that he can talk to him or whatever. And he never does at this point. But then we also see Burke, okay? Burke got to go. But before this, before this, when they were still up in the club at the beginning when Raquel was talking to everybody, um, you know, Marvin was getting low down on Tony. Tony did come back a little bit. She was up in the club. She saw her um new boo or whatever in there doing some coke or whatever. And as the dude said, he was doing some blow and she wound up blowing him. And that's just what happened. Okay. And I just want to know exactly what it is that Marvin got up his sleeve for her. Granted, I know you feel pissed off a little bit because she played you by turning you in to the cops or whatever you know snitching just to save her ass but exactly what is it gonna do i mean she didn't testify but i guess you know you still gotta rectify that so i don't know or did he really have feelings for her which i really don't feel like he did but um <clears throat> detective burke that bitch gotta go at this point she really has to go and i'm just annoyed she went to one of the police departments uh, file division. I don't know what it's called. Records division. Okay. When he got his records, uh, Howard's record, you know, and asking all these questions, what was this date? Why was he, uh, this, um, you know, two years span is empty or whatever, because he probably was undercover and all this stuff. Or woo, woo, woo. But I didn't know he was undercover and I didn't know it ain't your business, bitch. Like, at this point, she doing too goddamn much. She is giving Rodriguez a run for her goddamn money, bitch. Girl, I, will, I want Rodriguez to come in, okay? I know she ain't in during this period, but I really want her to come in because at this point, this bitch, she doing too damn much. I just don't understand. Why are you digging so deep up into Howard's stuff? Like, what are you trying to find? Okay, so he know who shot him. And if he don't want to say, he don't got to say. You pulling in the hoe that he fucking around with, talking about some, well, y'all having sex. And I'm pretty sure she, he's selling you something. Baby, I'll fuck somebody and never tell them nothing. Okay? You ain't got to tell nobody anything while you having sex. So that was the wrong angle to go through. He was paying that bitch. Okay? So what are you talking about? Now you're going through his records and shit. It's just too fucking much, girl. You're going to wind up getting yourself killed. And once you do, I'm going to be sitting here like, we told your ass. Calm the fuck down, okay? You being a fucking Karen at this point. Because why is you all up in this black man's business? I just don't understand it. You do not trust your partner, and that's why he won't give you any type of information. Mo meanwhile, um, talking about some stuff, you know, 
Lou had to ask Kanan, you really want to, um, you really chose to be up in this shit? And he was like, yeah, you know, that's what we was born into. This the family shit. He was like, no, nah, that's ain't what we got to do. That's what Raquel doing. At this point, you know, because even Unique was talking shit about Lou. And everybody sees it. This Lou's heart is not in it. And I can, I'm kind of scared for him. Because Raquel might do something to him. I think he could still hold his own out on the street, but it's almost as if people kind of lose a respect for him because they see that he don't really want to do this shit no more. His heart is into the music stuff and going kind of legit, all right? Raquel is the one that's forcing him to stay in this business, and everybody just sitting there like, why are you here, you know? Because he even giving off that attitude like, why am I here? So, I don't know. We got to keep a lookout on him. Um, Marvin going through the, uh, anger management course and actually speaking up and talking about the business, making it seem like he got a legitimate business. It did sound like it, but he's really talking about his issues with the drug game. Okay. And so, you know, he's curbing his language and it's almost as if he's being teacher's pet after that little conversation that they had. And I'm sitting here looking at them like, so when y'all finna fuck? Because at this point, I still don't trust this girl, and it's just giving that they finna fuck later on, okay? That's just all it is, you know? And he proud of himself, too. Meanwhile, Juke Mount, oh, Lord. Miss Juke, Miss Juke, Laverne. Oh, I should say Laverne. She ain't Jukebox when she with her mama. She with her, she, she's Miss Laverne, okay? She gave her that old-ass name. I have to remember, she was probably born, like, in the early 80s. No, she had to be born in the early set, the late seventies, okay? Because she's like sixteen or something in the eighties. This is early nineties, bitch. I don't know when she was born, okay? She was born in the seventies. There you go. But at the same time, I'm just looking at um Juke and, or I should say Laverne, because this is who we see, and I don't know if I'm liking it. And I say that because you know we see her getting dresses, getting her, you know, she's wearing her hair a particular way, whatever. We see the more feminine side of her coming out when she's with her mother. And it looked like she's wearing a little bit of makeup a little bit, you know. And she's not the same jukebox that we remember that used to play around uh, uh, with Kanan and, and be over there with Raquel and them. She's with her mother and now she's just this young lady, okay? She's not jukebox, I beat your ass and all that shit and I eat some puss on the side. She ain't that, okay? And it's just giving me like, girl, you having an identity of crisis right now. And it's almost as if like she wasn't really out the closet, but you can kind of tell. But it's like she pushing herself back in the closet for her mama fully. You know, it's almost as if she's scared to tell her that she gay and to be herself. And I'm like, you doing all these changes for somebody that you just met five minutes ago. It wouldn't be me. You got to accept me for who the fuck I am and how I am. I'm sorry to say it like that. But I just felt real strongly about that. Like, I ain't like that. I did not like that. And I can't even blame Kelly because she don't know. She don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and she, you can see the, the internal struggle that she's having with looking at herself in that way. So, uh, trying on these dresses and then realizing, like, which one do I want to be? Do I want to be me? Or is this really me? It's not really you, boo-boo. It's not really you. You are doing stuff to please somebody. And I feel like she's doing it just so that her mother won't leave her again. That's what it feels like. Baby Jukebox and her mama, well, I should say Laverne and Miss Kelly. Girl, it's so funny that, you know, her name is Kelly. And y'all know Destiny Childs and Kelly. Okay, we're not going to do the connection. But, you know, I just figured it out. But anyway... Um, Laverne and her mama walking down the street and then the dude that she used to boost with back in the day in season one, he come up on her like, I ain't seen you in a minute, bitch. What's going on with you? Matthew called her jukebox and everything. Kelly looking like, who the fuck is this? And I'm like, listen, your daughter got a whole nother life that you don't even know nothing about. Oh boy said, what's good with these fits? She said, you know, well, I'm just trying something new or whatever. He said, it's a whole new shit. Like, I mean, damn. Uh, okay, like you really bang your shit now. You going to the store and bang your stuff now. And you know, Kelly looking a little confused, but I'm pretty sure she can read between the lines. And, um, you know, she was like, I'm her mama. Okay, so that's what it is. And she was like, I'll catch up with you. He was like, who would have known Juke actually fine? I said, now shit, nigga. Okay, okay. She is a cutie, the the um the, the the actress that played her. But uh listen, I just need you to be herself. 
I need you to be herself. I don't need Laverne. I mean, Laverne and Juke can be the same people, but I need her to be who she truly is. And I know for a fact, she just, she don't want to lose her mama. And she probably scared, like I said earlier, that if she be who she is, it's what's going to make her mama go away again. And I can't, I, 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 I'm I sad that she's in that type of predicament or she feels that way. Meanwhile, you know, Unique set up this whole situation with the Bracellis and the Italians and, you know, Lou and Marvin and Raquel, they on Coney Island or whatever. I think uh, uh, Kanan was with him at one point. No, Kanan wasn't with him. It was Lou. And they looking for uh, Unique. Now, bitch, I thought you was supposed to ride over there. Maybe I didn't got that wrong. But he done rode over there with the goddamn Italians. And at that point, when he came out that car with the Italians, I just knew right then and there, this motherfucker was on some fuck shit. Okay? So, Bracelli come over there, and he was basically like, you know, I usually don't double back on shit that I do. You know, I don't have the same conversation twice. But since Unique, who like family, came over here and talked to me or whatever, I said, I listen to what you got to say. You know what? You want to come down in New Jersey? You will have New Jersey or whatever, but you still going to have to do what I say. You still going to have to pay a little tax on this. And then I'm going to make a little amendment. Unique got to run the shit. He got to be the one in charge and all that stuff. And I said, see, bitch. She said, you know what? Like I said, we family. Neek family or whatever. It took so much out of her to say that. Because you know Rock, she wanted to say you could take that shit and you could shove it up your ass. Okay? But you know she ain't do that. We in a public place. So we ain't even finna get rowdy right here, right now. And Unique has made it so that Rock cannot do what she needs to do without him. And I told y'all, this motherfucker been setting this shit up from the jump, okay? And I said, Rock, Rock, honestly, this is your fault. <laughs> this is your fault. First of all, you should have brought Roel in, okay? That's one. I get the game of war, you know, you. that's why you set him up or whatever, but it was the wrong move bringing Roel in, okay? You know, it's one thing to have a situation with, um, you know, taking over his stuff, but that's all you should have did. You shouldn't have took his soldiers or whatever because you can't trust somebody, you know? And like I said, as soon as he said, I'm loyal to you, but I still talk to Neek time and time again, it was over and done with it. You need to just go in here and take Roel out, okay? And let that be a lesson learned. Let that put 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 that in the air. Baby, I don't, I don't fuck with snitches. I don't fuck with uh rats and stuff like that. I don't do that shit. Them fake bitches, all right? Meanwhile, Kanan go over there because he's back in the game, right? He go over there getting a bag of money and um stuff that he needs to go drop off or whatever. And he realizing that it's money and all that stuff. And he trying to understand what he's supposed to do and, and what this for. And the dude that's giving him to him is like giving him a little fever. Like, you don't ask questions. You just drop the shit off, okay? I'm trying to learn. This what you're supposed to do. You the bag man, okay? You just drop the shit off. You don't ask questions. And so, you know, we got that little issue going on. And him and Famous out there... Walking out the building, they just talking. You know, I had these biddies over last night or whatever. You know, I had like the whole United Nation up in there. Black, Indian, you know, white, all this stuff. Little Asian. Girl, all of a sudden, why he talking? A cop pull up and they get out. They know these dudes, Freddie and his crew. And I guess they known for jacking motherfuckers. Because baby, they got out the car and they took Famous Chain. I said, so you really jacked this motherfucker just for a chain that could be true, that may or may not be real. All right, that's the issue. It may or may not be real. So you pulled up on him because of that and then took the money, the bag money, okay? And Freddie was just like, I don't give a fuck who you are, Kanan. I'm going to do what I got to do, okay? This is how we do it, this street business or whatever. And I'm just like, bro, you jacking the wrong person. And I said, damn, Kanan, you ain't ready for this shit. But he really is, right? You know, so he trying to get this shit together. Because, you know, you didn't took my mama money. I'm the first day on the job again, and I get jacked. Baby, now. Nah. Meanwhile, Raquel over here talking to Cartier, okay, about this whole money laundering thing and, you know, if stuff don't go through, how you still make your money and you don't even do stuff over in Jersey or whatever. So where is you getting your supply from and how you putting your demand out? He said, listen, Jersey and New York is oversaturated. It's too much. It's too congested. So I go to places where 
the demand is high, but it's not enough suppliers. So I can be an integral, you know, supplier type of person. Vertical integration. Baby, I said, oh, shit, Cartier went to business school. Because, girl, that's economics on your ass, okay? That is business economics right then and there. I said, well, shit, bitch, it be killing me sometimes when my degree coming to handy, coming to play. All of a sudden, I understand exactly what they talking about. Yeah, I be like, because sometimes I be sitting here like, damn, I went to school for what? For what? <laughs> it's a few of us that got degrees that can go anywhere, but we just be like, but bitch, for what? For what? But then when that shit just pop up and go through, you be like, okay, well, that's the reason. That's the reason. So I understand that shit. And basically, he going to like smaller places or, you know, places that have not too many big suppliers. D.C., Baltimore, Baltimore, okay, um, Virginia, you know what I'm saying? And then so that everybody can just be getting their supply from him. So, therefore, he's making his money because he can charge as much as he wants because they're willing to pay whatever. And so it was one moment where, you know, this guy came over there and he was like, I'm going to need some help trying to put your paintings in the car. And Cartier turned around and looked at his ass and slapped the door. Dog shit. I said, now, wait a minute, Hollywood. I'm about one like this. And if you know the reference, you know the reference. But, baby, this Cartier, I ain't never looked at your ass like that. I don't know, baby. Um, A little bit of violence kind of turned me on. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Something's wrong. You know, it's a hood mentality. I, I just got to get out of it. I'm telling y'all, bitch. I'm telling y'all. It is a good thing that I am a gay woman. Because if I was straight... And if I stay in the hood, hood, baby, yeah, 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 y'all already know the rest. God was looking out because I just couldn't do it. I, I can't go full bird. I can't go full bird. I can't be the ones that y'all be talking about on the internet, on Twitter and everything. I just can't do it because I'll be that one holding my man's gun and everything and just... Here you go, daddy. You know what I'm saying? I'll be that nigga. I'll be that bitch. I really would. Anyway, moving on from that, you know, he said, don't you ever. I said, ooh. Now, sir, you ain't have to do all of that to him. But damn, he put his foot down. Raquel was looking a little. I said, uh-uh. So what is going on with y'all? Is y'all going to do something together? I don't want that to happen. That's a little bit too obvious, but I don't want that to happen. I don't think it is, okay? I think it's just a business situation. Meanwhile, speaking of Cartier, let's talk about Miss Ziza, okay? Lou, I need you to leave the Spanish girls alone because one bitch already done fucked you over. She didn't already fucked you over. Don't do this with this one, okay? And she connected to Cartier, and if shit don't go fucking right, Cartier may come up in there and try to do some shit to you too, okay? So I'm looking out for you. Ziza come up in there to the studio talking about saying, you always up in the studio. You don't never take no break. He said, ain't no nothing in the streets for me. She said, it's me, you know? And why you ain't tell me that that was your um, niece song that you gave me? She came to my house and my mom, my parents' house and pressed me about it. And was like, and she sound better on it anyway. It don't matter about who sound better. It's just about, I said, what you mean? He said, it's the it's a look or whatever that's, you know, a flavor that they looking for, basically. Water down. Okay, we don't want a powerful singer. We want a water down bitch so we can get some commercial success. That's just what it is. You know, she complained about the fact that Cartier said the song ain't on the airwaves yet. And if it don't get on the airwaves, you know, he gonna take her from this record label. And, um, you know, they already got this deal in place, so he don't want that to happen. And so, you know, she was like, when I sing, I sing songs and I be thinking about, you know, the person I'm with. I be thinking about somebody, my man and all that stuff. He was like, who you be thinking about? She said, you know who I be thinking about. I said, uh-uh, step the fuck away. Step the fuck away. Because, bitch, you should have put your foot down once you found out that that song was um, Juke song. And you should have been like, fuck that, I ain't singing her song, okay? That's her song or whatever. Give me something else but no you ain't gonna do that so hey maybe you probably can't do that but i mean you ain't put up no fight <laughs> you ain't put up no fight you ain't got no morals about yourself either so fuck that meanwhile kane going over there to famous house trying to look for a knife or something and he ain't got nothing up in there he said, bitch, I don't cook, so what you think I'm going to do? Girl, he done gone down there to Corinne's house, okay, and um, asking her for a knife and all that shit. She like, what you doing with a knife? What you need with a knife? You don't look like you cook or whatever. 
Bitch, giving him all the the, the the fucking third degree just for a goddamn knife. I said, bitch, if you don't go in the kitchen and get him a knife, I said, Kane, in the kitchen is right around the corner. The, the apartment ain't really that damn big, okay? Go around the corner and go ahead and get the knife out the drawer, okay? And then go handle what you got to do. Bitch, why, Pala? What's her name? Pala, Pamor, Palamore, bitch, statutory rape. Why she come up in here, Um, the mama, I said, Miss Andy. Miss Andy. Now, see, girl, I knew not to trust your ass when you was on goddamn sisters because you don't make the right decisions. And I see the decisions that you are making on this goddamn show right about now. I said, oh, so you a cradle robber, huh? Now, everybody that said, and we all was saying it, baby, you give me tease like you're going to try to fuck this little boy. Okay? You are a grown woman who look like she a little youngin', but you still a grown woman. And you starting to fuck around with this little boy. You come up in here talking about some, listen to what a man, if a man want to cook, you need to go on here and let him cook or whatever. But listen, Kane, come here because I got something that you can need. Give him a little shooter piece. Okay? Look like a little twenty two. I could be wrong. I don't know the size of these guns. You know, my man ain't here yet. So, it is what it is. Kane teach me not so uh rude bitch so uh she was like you know you go ahead and take care of whatever you need to take care of and all that stuff and then gonna give him a kiss i said why are we being seductive with this little kid he is a kid he is a kid i don't give a fuck about hood politics bitch he is a kid this is disgusting statutory rape all right i said girl get the fuck up out of here uh nasty meanwhile he go follow one of the dudes that um you know was in the car that jacked him and they popped up the uh the apartment door and he went on in there with the gun and all that shit freddie was like listen listen i was gonna get the stuff right back because as soon as i realized what was going on and what it was i know i don't fuck with shit like that we don't do stuff like that my bag came and he was like yeah 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 so he got the bag and he had to put his shit down you know what i'm saying bitch Fuck all that talking. We got to make an example out of you. You ain't finna be the, um, acting like you could just come rolling up on me. He started whooping that nigga ass. Famous is sitting there like this. Yo, what the fuck? Oh my God. I said, I know you not shocked. This is the hood life, bitch. What you thought happened? Niggas get shot and niggas get their ass beat. What are you talking about? Why are you acting so surprised? And then what really pissed me out, what really, really pissed me out was when um the um neighbor walked past and he was looking. That old man wasn't finna say or do nothing. That nigga been up in the street himself. He know street code. You don't say nothing. I ain't see nothing. I ain't hear nothing. I'm going to keep on walking. I probably saw a little bit of something because I want to see something. But I'm going to just keep on walking and man, my business. Here go famous. Yo, we got to go. We got to say, nigga, why you so goddamn loud? Why you so goddamn Now, if something happened to famous, it's well deserved at this point. He is a fake ass wannabe street nigga. Okay? He really is. Cause when it comes down to it, he ain't got the hustle for it. Okay? I said, you know what, Kane? You said I gotta put my shit down and let you motherfuckers know. He stumped that bitch up in his face. I said, you know what? Freddie, you had that shit coming. What you expect when you steal people's shit? It is what it is. So when Fame and um Kane and Lee, they walking down the street or whatever, next thing you know, the cops roll up on them, okay? And they get separated. It's every man for themselves when the cops is chasing you. So, of course, famous dumbass trips, which trips him up and get him caught by the cops, okay? Kanan gets away. Famous goes to jail, all right? He get booked and holding. That's it. Meanwhile, you know, Kanan finally comes home and he's telling Raquel what's going on that, you know, famous got locked up and we need to go get him. Raquel said, I mean, what he do? That ain't our problems. He got a mama. Let his mama take care of that shit. And honestly, I don't know why Kane and thought that Raquel was going to do anything to get him out of jail. Okay? He, she barely lets him come to the house, if that. All right? So, I mean, if she didn't let that boy stay up in the house when he got locked out, what did you think that she was going to go ahead and bail his ass out of jail? Hell no. Meanwhile... She over there talking to Marvin. Marvin trying to see how everything going or whatever. And, you know, she puts out there that, you know, Kelly is back. Juke, uh, uh, Laverne Mama is back, okay? And mind you, mind you, for everybody that want to be taking up for Marvin and all that shit, don't care, you spit on me, I'm doing shut the fuck up, okay? Because, bitch, I wish a nigga would. But, um, Rock had to get his ass straight, too. Bitch, 
daddy and them, mommy and them, they ain't never put their hands on nobody, okay? And if you would have did some shit like that to me, bitch, I would have fucked your ass up. And you know I didn't um, raise Juke and everything, so therefore you did that shit to her. That's just like you doing that shit to me. I said, put that little motherfucker up in his place. I know that's goddamn right. Mind you, Rock is not the oldest in this situation. Marvin is older than goddamn Rock, and Rock be talking to Marvin like he's a little-ass boy, and I just fucking love it, all right? And everybody keep on mentioning that, you know, every time we see goddamn Marvin, we see him eating on something, and that's literally what he does. When he was down there on Coney Island miss, uh, meeting up with the uh, Italians, he was eating something, asking about Eddie Murphy House. <laughs> Come on, all right? But, um... Now we get to know that there really is something that happened, but we don't really know if it was anything that was dealing with Marvin. I don't know at this point if Marvin had something to do with Jukebox Mama leaving because when, um, you know, what's her name? Rock brings it up about the fact that, you know, she getting, she didn't, she came back to town and all that stuff. And Marvin felt somewhere about it. Marvin felt somewhere about it to the point where he went to go see her. And he was like, what, you want to come back like you finna get a check? She said, no, I ain't come back for no check or nothing. Uh, he said, because you out there want to be a wannabe Anita Baker. <laughs> I said, don't do her like that. Don't do her like that. There was really had to be a real reason for her to leave besides the fact that she was young and probably felt stifled. I'm pretty sure, you know, as vindictive Raquel is, I'm, I, you, I cannot put that out of my brain. I don't care how old Marvin is. We don't know the age difference. Shit, Raquel can be a couple of years younger than her, uh, younger than him. Okay, and she could still be just as vindictive back then as she is now. And so at this point, I really do feel like um, Kelly uh, was probably ran out by something that Rock said or did or whatever the fuck it is, probably threatened her or whatever. Okay, because you don't just all of a sudden become the person that you are today. No, that shit been brewing. Okay, and so when um, Marvin went over there to her place and basically told her she needs to get the fuck out, um, Jukebox don't need you. I said she do need her. Okay, she need her more than she need you right about now. Honestly, she need both of y'all, but in this case, she do need her mama. Mind you, Jukebox is not changing the way that she's dressing. You know, she's going to the family dinner with her dress on, with her hair still down and everything. Marvin, of course, is trying to make um, small talk with her, but she ignoring him. Okay, I said, child, it is a mess. It is a mess. Um, you can't tell that girl to get over that hurt because once a parent put their hands on you like that, I almost snuff your life out. It, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. And that's going to hurt deep. Meanwhile, you know, um, this whole situation, well, Kanan had to tell um, Marvin the whole situation about what happened with Famous. And then he told him that the cops took the money. And I was like, the cops ain't going to get the money back. Okay. These dirty cops, they probably already didn't, you know, uh, what is this? Split it up amongst themselves already, okay? So now they got to figure out that whole situation. Kanan just don't want to tell Rock that the money is gone, all right? Um, meanwhile, Rock then told uh, Lou what was going on, you know? Because when that whole situation with Unique happened, um, Unique brought up the fact that Lou missed Royale, okay? When he was shooting him in season one, remember when he was giving old girl, doing his girl, and then Lou came up in there, tried to shoot him up and missed all that shit. And then in that situation, he was like, maybe it wasn't um, Royale's time. And so, you know, Rock had questioned Lou and was like, is Unique serious about that? Is that true? You really missed him on purpose or something like that? And he was like, no, nah, maybe it's my subconscious telling me I don't need to be doing this shit. And then she was like, maybe it's my subconscious telling you that uh, Crown think that your ass don't need to be up in the um, music shit either. Because you ain't good at that either. I said, God damn, Rock. Now, I'm glad that you finally told him what fucking Crown did because he a snake ass nigga. You know, but she didn't do it just to look out for Lou. She did that shit to hurt Lou. Okay. Because it wasn't the fact that he not he don't know what he doing. That's not really what Crown said. Or I can't re really remember. Crown just don't want Lou in charge. He just don't want him there. So I feel like Raquel put a little bit of extra sauce on it, trying to make it seem like Lou don't know what he's talking about or what he's doing or whatever in his music shit. And I'm just like, damn, you really trying to cut that nigga deep? Meanwhile, Famous up in jail, right? And Famous asked 
just like T.I. son came. Because that motherfucker was up in jail, and then all of a sudden, he want to start freestyling. Now, he ain't even in jail. He's in booking. He's in the holding cell. He hasn't even really been booked yet. And so, he is doing a little freestyle, talking about his Glock and all this stuff. I said, nigga, you ain't even got this shit. See, he's a fake-ass studio gangster, okay? He's one of these motherfuckers that talk about the streets, talk about getting bodies, talking about stabbing up people, but ain't never did the shit, Okay. And that's what he was talking about. One of the dudes was like, hey, yo, you you the dude that sang that song, The Streets Need a Body? He was like, yeah, that's me. He said, I hate that song. Bitch, the way his face went from, yeah, that's me, to. <laughs> he said, and I seen your shit all up in the trash. Obviously, your shit ain't doing nothing, and that shit trash as fuck anyway. Bitch, at that point, famous, you should have got it in your your head right in and there. Don't nobody care about this fucking music shit that you're doing. Because you fake as hell and people can see right through it. And that is the problem with famous. People can see right through his bullshit. Like, he tried so damn hard. And so, you know, um, Kana went and got Detective Howard to get him out. And even Detective Howard looking at him was like... The nigga that you with is a fucking clown, okay? He was like, yo, I just got out. You know what I'm saying? I did some hard time and all that shit. And I, you can't tell me that ain't... Listen, go back and look at the videos and shit when King got arrested, all right? And the way that he was acting. He was so happy that he got arrested. He playing fake-ass gangster. That is the same way goddamn famous was acting, okay? I'm sitting here like, boy, if you don't shut the fuck up, I did some hard time. You ain't do shit. Like Detective Powers said, you was just up in the goddamn hole to sell, okay? Shut up. And then he gonna get mad at Katie and say, whenever I make an appointment to meet up with your ass, you better show up. Don't have me sitting there looking stupid. I said, now, hold the fuck up. You ain't been my daddy all of but 10 minutes, okay? And I don't even call you no daddy, okay? You father, you spurned on it at this point. And I truly don't even understand or believe it yet. You know, this is what I'm talking like if, if I was Kanan. This is what I'd be thinking. So you can boop, 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 back the fuck up with that talk, okay? You don't get the authority to, uh, you know, talk to me that way just yet, all right? Mm-mm. 16 years ago in the making, baby. No, we ain't finna do that shit. You done missed all those years. You won't get to talk to me like that. But he gave him something. And he gave him that money back, I think. He gave him something. He said, it's some more stuff in here that, um, you know, answer some questions that you probably got. Okay? Clear some shit up. Meanwhile, they gave us this insequential, unnecessary ass scene with Burke and the bitch that she, her ex or whatever. And I just don't understand it. <laughs> I don't understand where we're going with this. I don't understand why is she being so obsessive about what it is that Malcolm is doing. That's the detective name, Malcolm Howard. What is it he's doing? He's really not doing nothing. He has done nothing wrong besides not telling who shot him. That's it. And if he said he don't remember, I let that shit fucking go. Why it, do they got her digging so deep? And it's like, bitch, you laying there with your bitch. You laying there with your bitch. You got pussy right there. And you are thinking about another man and what he is doing with his life. Bitch, I be face deep up in that shit. What are you talking about? And eventually they do do that stuff or whatever. And I was just waiting for the girl to be like, why do you worry so much? Why do you care so much? Is it affecting your job? No. So why are you worrying so much? And why is this bothering so much on your membrane? But, you know, they wind up having sex. And that was the most unnecessary, no chemistry. And I'm a gay bitch. And I love looking at, you know, lesbianic shit. And baby, it did. After, I was just like, all right, let me fast forward. Let me fast forward. Okay, because listen, it just did absolutely nothing for me. Meanwhile, Unique, he got set up in one of the little houses over there in New Jersey. And, you know, the other worker that was there was pissed the fuck off about it. I would have been too. Unique set this whole shit up so he can get his ass back in the game. And he going to turn on, um, he going to turn on Raquel. And speaking of Burke, bitch, while Malcolm is out there with, um, Kanan, of course, she out there looking at him. Shoot her. <laughs> I'm so tired of her. I'm tired. Baby, Crown was up in that studio. So at this point, 
Listen, Lou came up in there and said, bitch, it is one thing that you was fucking goddamn Jessica. You know, I, I, I don't let hoes come in between business and shit. But it's another thing for your ass to go behind my back and then to go to my sister. Now, see, Crown was talking all that shit or whatever, like, you know you ain't good at this. I said, well, shit, maybe he did tell Raquel that. And she really wasn't just trying to put a little sauce on there. You know you can't run this shit without me. You need me. Everybody know me and everything or whatever. You ain't nothing going to be nothing but Raquel's little brother. I said, oh, that's insulting just like you. Ain't you Brandy, brother? That's the same insult. It's on the same goddamn level. The way he said that shit, I would have felt offended too. And just for him saying that, I would have, I would have took him out too. Okay, but you know, Crown tried to play it off when he found out that Raquel went on ahead and told him about their little meeting, and he still tried to play it tough. Cause I feel like Crown knew that he was about to go. He was about to go. Bitch, at that point, Lou turned his ass around like he was going to walk out the door. And he turned right back around. And he punched that motherfucker so hard, he went through the table, bitch. He took the goddamn um fucking cord to the goddamn keyboard up there. And he then wrapped that bitch around crown neck. And he struggled for a good three minutes to, to, to choke that motherfucker out. Because you know what? I, I appreciate this scene because, you know, sometimes when you look at movies or TV shows, they be showing you trying to, uh, people be breaking their necks or whatever when they choke them out and it happens in like two seconds. No, it takes a minute. The neck is kind of thick, bitch, okay? It takes a minute and when they be struggling, it takes a while. And so I appreciate that shit, all the whole acne, bitch. Maybe there's something wrong with me because I enjoyed that. Maybe I just really didn't like Crown, okay? Bye, Quincy. Back Quincy, I'll be sure go ahead, you know, night and day, night, night, you know, um, so he had to get his shit out of there. And then here comes Ziza. So what we gonna do about crown? What we gonna do now? I said, uh-uh, girl, you next. Take her ass out too. But that was Raising Canaan. All right. I like the episode. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And I'll see y'all later. Peace.